G'day folks, and welcome to Saturday at Ed Systems. Uh, I had a bit on this this morning, I went down the junkyard, did a few hours work with them. Um, didn't really find anything interesting, it's been fairly quiet lately. Uh, did get about four kilos of uh, like large lumpy brass bar ends from a machine shop, so I've got a fresh supply of bushing material and that sort of stuff. Uh, that's always good. I ran out about a couple of months ago and I wanted to make some big brass thrust washers for something and I didn't have any material so thankfully some's just showed up and I bought pretty much half of it. So I've got plenty of brass solid bar to machine up on the lathe. Um, yeah, I'm just working out what I'm going to do with the Yanmar project at the moment. Um, sort of in half a mind to make it a portable power pack more than just part of a big shredding system because then I'll end up with a machine that's so big and heavy I can't move it. Or it'll have to have tractor wheel, or not tractor wheels, but trailer, normal car tyres and axles on it, and just live outside permanently. So both are a good option. I mean, I could encase the engine and everything in a compartment underneath and uh, run it separately, or run it as a sealed unit. But for now, I just want to get the engine mobile and mount it above the hydraulic tank. I'm not going to be mounting the tank over the top because it makes servicing too difficult. Uh, let's have a look at it. So that's the engine. Uh, the tank's outside at the moment, but the tank's roughly the same volume as the engine itself. And it has to stand on its end, or well, not its end, but on its side. So the engine's going to be fairly high up, so whatever wheels I put on it are going to come out about here. So it's going to have a fairly wide wheelbase, so it's not top heavy, it's not going to tip over and uh, large diameter casters or something like that. I've got a few different casters and things. That's a bit small, I think. That came off the old uh, kerosene burning pre steam cleaner. They're pretty much seized. I'm going to have to rebuild those casters if I want to use them again. But, yeah, I've got to figure out some decent wheels, axles. I mean, if I can get Brad to strip down the other Corolla um, front wheel drive drive shaft and remove the hub assembly for me soon I'll be able to use those two like it'll have it'll end up with 13 inch car wheels on it essentially but that's sort of getting a bit bit big so I'm trying to keep this as compact as possible but still retaining hydraulic power capabilities otherwise I might as well take the pump off and this thing would just be a running display piece again so I want it to be fairly practical but either way, it's going to sit up high on top of the tank with the diesel tank down below as well and uh, have full access to the top of the engine and all that sort of stuff. Otherwise, the tank would end up covering all of this area here or being up, I don't know, fairly high. So there's two options. I could mount the tank overhead, but it just means you can't really work on the engine very easily, not without having to remove the tank and the lines and things like that going to it. Don't know, I haven't decided yet. I did get some hydraulic oil and stuff so that I can run the pump properly. <laughs> I've just cleaned all these hoses and things out spotless and just made up a little temporary tank for the time being. I got a drum of that for $98 today, so that's not too bad. The other place I went to, which is a hydraulic specialist, I will eventually need to use to get some lines and things crimped and made up, but they wanted 120 for their stuff, so... 98 bucks for that's better than uh, 45 dollars for a four litre container which is essentially that uh, from the same place i bought that from repco for 98 dollars or sorry 95 <laughs> but they also sell ones on the shelf in four litre like commercial retail containers for 45 dollars a piece so you do the math and work out what's worth more or what's better value especially when you need so much of it not going to fill the tank up with those. I'll fill the tank with one of them at $95 a drum. It's probably going to take three drums to fill the hydraulic tank. Although the tank's a bit bigger than I need. Either way, also got some degreaser. 20 bucks a carton. Can't go wrong. It's all I ever use. I don't buy the really expensive degreasers. That stuff works just, just fine. If there's anything really stubborn, I hit it with, with a bit of carburetor cleaner first. Anywho, this camera is flashing its battery alarm again, so I better get into this instead of uh, waffling on about crap. Hmm. Well, I guess I should get little car out of the naughty corner now. Only because I ran the battery down. 
well, let it run down. Alternator's working fine, it's just short cycling and uh, leaving, leaving things on. <laughs> It's hard to drive one-handed, but manual steering, it's not too bad considering we're on grass. <laughs> Still got to get that V8 engine block on the trailer somehow. Scrap metal. A bit of a clean-up in here. The dead vacuum cleaner. New old stock Holden SV6 muffler. Uh, other rubbish. Oh, I thought I threw that out. It's the tail lamp from a BMW that Dad broke scrap inner tubes. They're handy if we can fill them up with water and stick them inside something and pop it hydrostatically. Compressed air explosions are kind of not on around here but water-based stuff is fairly quiet and effective. But yeah, little car needs some more attention. I haven't gotten around to stripping any of the interior out or anything like that so I'll do it fairly soon. Getting up to temperature now. Yeah, engine needs maintenance, but it's a backyard car, it's never going to be registered or run on the road again, so doesn't matter what I do with it really. Mind you, I do like this car, it is kind of handy and fun to run things over. <laughs> Not quite as good as a Range Rover though, you can uh, do ser more serious damage with a Range Rover. There we go, little car's happy now. <laughs> Pretty responsive little thing. Does like to wheel spin though. Need to eh, replace those tyres with something more serious, I think. <laughs> Got a pair of little tractor tyres that might do it. Hmm. Somehow I think my lawn won't like it, but that would work quite well. Though that one's clearly worn a lot more than that one. They probably popped this one and replaced it, and that one's just, yeah, a lot older. Well, just before I wrap this up, I thought I'd just promote a couple of uh, very interesting videos that I found recently by, uh, what was it, Public Resource Org? Um, yeah, the 1950s and 1960s videos on electrical equipment, starter motors, alternating current and direct current motors and generators and various, various other stuff which explains the principle of 
AC and DC motors and generators in the best form that I've ever, ever seen in my life. Like none of the stuff that I learned in TAFE college or anything like that equates to the quality and ease of understanding of this kind of equip, this kind of um, just, yeah, these presentations are perfect. Just as they should be. Basic black and white films from the 1950s and 60s. So, yeah. Look it up. I'll post some links in the description to alternating current and direct current generators and motors and things like that. There are detailed one on transformers, principles of the starter motor, AC motors and DC motors, generators, all that good stuff. They're old, but old stuff's the best to learn from, so any of you, any of my viewers who have questions about how these things work, I know these videos are half an hour or at least 15 minutes long for the smallest one. Just sit down and watch the whole lot. <coughs> I'm losing my voice here, but yeah, it's just awesome stuff. This one's 36 minutes long and it's a detailed video on AC motors, alternating current motors. So, well worth watching. They're defence force videos intended for uh, technicians in the field working on various ele electrical equipment, radar equipment, that sort of stuff. But all of the principles still apply to modern day electrics. Three phase, single phase, whatever. Ohm's Law. Yeah, so if you see this, click the links in the description because it is just invaluable information. Absolutely amazing stuff. Well worth watching, well worth learning from. That's all for tonight and thanks for watching.